Today we will be talking about a publication called The Verge. And I like to call them The Verge of Sanity because the people working there are clearly insane. But every now and then they rise up to the surface where an objective viewer might say, oh, look, that, that one, that one might be getting a conscious. That one might, might get a little bit of sanity. Oh, no, and it's gone. So the reason I'm saying this is that um, a couple of years ago, a scientist managed to do something incredible. He managed to do something amazing, not just for himself or his country, but for the world as a whole, for the scientific community. He landed a shuttle on a flying comet. And the, the scientific applications for this are limitless. And The Verge, a publication that has a section dedicated to science, could have asked this guy any question they wanted. Instead, they focused on the shirt. Because you see, women are like vampires, and if they see a shirt that has risque drawings, uh, they view that shirt like garlic and they are being ostracized. Now, they couldn't name a single woman that wanted to go to STEM, but saw a guy wearing a shirt and said that, okay, well, maybe STEM is not for me. Maybe I'm going to go to gender studies instead. No, they just claim to speak for women everywhere because every single woman on the face of the earth have voted for The Verge as their representative. And what ended up happening was a coordinated harassment campaign on the internet against the scientist to the point where he had to break down in tears apologizing on the camera in a day that should have been his greatest success. In a day that should have hinted uh, of his achievements not for himself, but for humanity as a whole. So this is why I really don't like The Verge as a publication. I mean, imagine in an alternative universe where a Muslim woman manages to push the human knowledge regarding science. And you have editors from The Verge going there and asking her, how dare you wear that hijab? How dare you cover your face with the burqa? Do you not know that this country has a lot of Islamophobes that would like to get into STEM but find your clothing to be ostracizing? Of course, that would be absolutely ridiculous now, wouldn't it? Quite deplorable because the way people dress is called freedom of expression. And since the shirt wasn't considered obscene, it was just risque, the version of shut the fuck up. Now, last year, they also did something to outdo themselves because insane people just constantly have to one-up themselves. You see, The Verge released a video on how to build a computer. And there are millions of such videos on YouTube, tutorial videos, they call them, where your average Joe goes into a garage and builds up a computer. But what The Verge did was to do what the mainstream media always do, what the corporate press specializes at doing. They managed to get a lot of money pumped into the production of the video to the point where the video looks very pristine, very flawless, really nice angles. Um, it looks very professional, but the information there was abysmal. If you try to create a computer, according to the tutorial that The Verge is offering you, you also need to summon Jesus Christ in order to make a prayer to bring back that computer from the dead just like he did with Lazarus. Now, there is a lot of animosity for multi-billion dollar corporations because on one hand, we keep hearing that they are better than the average YouTuber, that they are better than the average Joe in his house working on his garage, uh, that we need to get wisdom and light from corporations like The Verge uh, rather than the random pleb, which happens to have a video camera and a microphone in his house. And YouTube even calls these people authoritative sources to the point where the algorithm is going to de-rank your average Joe in favor of publications such as Vox, CNN, or Fox News. And YouTube actually explains how the system functions. Uh, basically, if they decide something is newsworthy, the algorithm is going to de-rank anyone that isn't an authoritative sources in favor of the multi-billion dollar corporation. So the example would be with Captain Marvel when um, people were criticizing the movie and they didn't really appreciate the trailers and the publicity behind it. Then YouTube just labeled Captain Marvel as newsworthy and anyone that had Captain Marvel on the title would appear on page four or five when it came to the search results while the top was bombarded with the shield media. So you kind of understand why people don't really like 
uh, the mainstream media when it comes to corporations, with big corporations. Uh, reason being that they get favorable treatment. And time and time again, it shows that they do invest a lot of money in polishing and making something look good. But the information presented there is not always accurate or what the average guy is looking for. So as you can imagine, there were a lot of people giving sass and mocking and making fun of the way The Verge couldn't even build a computer, which begs the question, if they can't really build a computer, can they really talk about science? Now, it turns out that uh, The Verge didn't appreciate this very much, so they started issuing DMCAs and false copyright takedowns for anyone that would show even the tiniest portion of that video on their YouTube channel. Now, people have fought those claims, many have won, but uh, I, I'm not going to include any of it from that video uh, in order not to have this taken down. But there's going to be a link in the description so you can actually see for yourself the glory on which uh, The Verge wants to lecture other people on how to build the computer. And obviously this created a Streisand effect, which led to a lot of people um, talking about it more than before. Because, you know, if The Verge is such ashamed of their own material, then surely more people need to see it. We need more speech rather than less. And when they are found guilty of doing it, the only play that these publications always do is to shift for better and play the only card in their hand, which is racismus. Because yes, that, that is the main problem. The only reason that people didn't appreciate this guy building a PC for The Verge is because of racismus. And we have a Khaled here to give us the light, to, to, to bring wisdom into our rooms and explain to us how it is racist. Because most people are, are aghast. They're like, what, 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 what do you mean this, this is racismus? It's okay. Khalid, racismus expert, professional is going to explain to us that you see, if you look on YouTube, you're going to see that there are too many white dudes dominating. They're also straight. So what he did is he went to the YouTuber, pulled down his pants and went like, whoop, ah, the dick. And, and he did that to everyone. He just pulled down the pants. Khalid, you're a pervert. So pervert Khalid pulls down the pants of YouTubers and also asks them, very important question, where do you put your cock? In the pussy or in the boom? And because they said in the pussy, they were like, ah, see, you do not deserve to be on YouTube. I bet this is how they hire people at The Verge. Khalid, why did you answer at The Verge when they popped the question? Where do you put your dick, Khalid? In an asshole or in a pussy? Huh? Which, which answer do you need to give to be hired by The Verge? I wonder. Brilliant. No, I, honestly, I love taking wisdom from The Verge of Sanity. I, I, I just absolutely adore it. This is how my worldview needs to be like, okay? Before you hire a guy, first of all, you're 23 and be him. You ask him, like, tell me, uh, was your grandfather, uh, what, what color, what race was your, very important for your resume, my son. And then when you find out that you hire the correct person for the skin color of the job, uh, you go like, uh, but now tell me the, the actual question. Uh, is Pablo here arousing you? Yeah? Would you? Would you be aroused by Pablo? Or would you be aroused by Francita? You know, like, very important questions. Like, how, how can you even have a business without asking these questions. So apparently he complains that YouTube has too many straight white dudes. Um, well, I guess blame everyone who watches them, like blame the people of color watching them, blame the women watching them, you know, like blame all these people that are making them popular because YouTube is not like The Verge. You see, with The Verge, you give your resume and if you're hired, you are given a platform. They give you the platform. On YouTube, you have to build your own platform doesn't work that way. So if people don't like it, then they're not going to watch your shit, Khalid. See, I, I, I don't see you having a community building you up, Khalid the pervert. Because he really cares about the sexuality of people. But uh, if I were to see a young man with short hair and a beard constantly pulling down the pants of YouTubers to see if they're a boy or a girl, can you even say that without being transphobic, though? That, that's the biggest question of today. Uh, but I don't think it was transphobic when this article was written, so we're safe. We need to use the, the appropriate morals for that period of time, see? Uh, yeah, but if I were to see uh, an individual doing that, I don't think I would follow them, Khalid, right? So, this is the difference between big corporations and YouTube. You have to build your own shit here. It's not like The Verge. Um, so, apparently, 
he goes on and explains his racismus uh, and, and shows how people were mocking uh, the, the guy at the first. Like, look at this racist. I install my DI card fan and the air goes now towards the roof. What should I do to fix this? Yeah, you should stick to choosing equipment by color you like. Specs are for pussies. Better get a laptop since you can't build a PC for shit. Bet you, bet you jacked off when Bitwit's vid got removed because yes, like videos were removed. So you see, The Verge is the real victim here. Like the multi-billion dollar corporation is being harassed by these six individuals online. I, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to manage. I hope they're going to come out okay from this massive controversy where where these six dudes that don't even get like retweets. They don't, they don't even get like any any hearts. I mean, except this, this kitty. This kitty got 21 hearts. But either than that, yes, the Verge is in, in big trouble. And it's all because they had the audacity to hire a black person, I am led to believe. Now let's look at what people say in the comment section. Definitely not harassment. That guy doesn't know how to build a PC. And what does he do? He makes a guy to build PCs. Kind of reminds me of a lot of journalists uh, writing for video games who really can't play video games. But what do they do? They write about video games. A five-year-old kid nowadays can build a PC better than that. That is actually very sad and true. On top of all this, he couldn't even take criticism and went to call everyone, quote-unquote, angry nerds and or haters. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. When the guy was called out and people were criticizing the video, instead of admitting responsibility, he decided to call everyone a hater. This is, again, why YouTubers have better communities than the people from the mainstream media. When you, like, if you criticize a guy for writing a comic book at Marvel, he's going to give you sass and he's going to block you. If you criticize a YouTuber for his content, chances are he might take less and, and take heart. People who don't aren't going to survive a lot on this platform. Stop pushing this leftist crap. They got someone for their diversity, not their knowledge of PC building. When that blew up in their face and people re reacted accordingly, you whine that they are getting backlash. Our society is managed by computers. If they were built in the way that was displayed, we would have numerous deaths. Get off your high horse. This guy had 185 claps, by the way. These are like the, the readers from The Verge. Like, look, let's scroll down. To turn this into a race debate, to even notice the gender and race of Stefan's critics is phenomenally irresponsible. He made suggestions which received millions of views that were likely to destroy a new bill. There were ideas presented in this video that exhibited such a distinct lack of knowledge of PC building that only the Dunning Kruger effect could describe such confident ignorance. He would precede claims with its common PC building good practice before suggesting something that could destroy a PC. This was certainly not nitpicking. To attack his rightful critics based on their gender and race highlights only the author's ignorance and spite. So I want to show why most mainstream media outlets just close down their comment sections because you would see this on pretty much every single mainstream outlet whenever you would have a hot take over a, a, an opinion that a journalist has, usually when talking about racism. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Tomorrow we're probably going to talk about a commercial, about uh, a, a PC commercial which got banned because uh, it, it was not diverse enough. So tune in tomorrow and hopefully you guys will have a nice day. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you appreciate this video and share it around.